people were there. So, so I'll pass. I'll pass to Angela to give updates on the on the onboarding working group, on the status from mm -hmm. uh, I and Jonas and Duce, and yeah, and then we can open the topic of the executive layer. And sorry, oh. just. Yeah. I'll just give an overview of the of what we're aiming to do today. That is um, that is the onboarding working group updates and then often principles. So our working group it's not as objective as the comms one, unfortunately. So I spent a lot of time in this board this week and researching um, how we can move forward with the amount of data we have. So I started to collect um, some points on correlating what we have with Austrian principles, and we'll dive more into that. And then uh, just an update on the accountability layer that we discussed last week. And I'll pass to you, Angela. OK. I'll keep it short, because all I have to say is that I'm really happy with the progress the guys are making, Eli, uh, Jonas, and Dulce. And um, it might be some overlaps perhaps with other working groups and that's totally fine for us. It's making, let's say, try to make the most out of what we can do during the course and then let's say put the scenarios on the table and then start the process of course to discuss it with tech and legal and culture and comms and see, okay, how we can how can we funnel it towards the best solution for TE Commons, right? So this is the, just to give you some context here. And I, I told them, hey, um, there are limitations, but um, don't try to fit to limitations only. Try to keep the horizon wide and collect as many insights about stakeholders as possible. All right, Eli, Dulce, Jonas, stage is yours. Hi everyone. Hi. So I'm not sure if you saw our Miro board. I can paste that into the channel right now. Um, it's not super important now, but I thought it'd be useful to let you poke around in our collective brain. Uh, it's sort of like a mix of stakeholder boards plus some some sketching out of the crypto economic scenarios we're imagining. Um, and then in terms of our progress, we're finalizing some questions to send out for stakeholder interviews to sort of test our assumptions about the crypto economics so far. Um, so we'd love anyone's feedback on that. And we're going to try to have them sent out basically as soon as possible. But um, I can give you a more specific date shortly. Oh, and all... And I will send a link, yeah. Yeah. We'll probably just put it in the SoftGov working group channel uh, in Discord. And I can feel, put it in there. And feel free to ask any other questions that are relevant for you or get feedback. It's important. If you guys want to schedule a time to ask me questions or deep dive, I, I, I'm kind of falling into the product owner role uh, and know the limitations of the tech spec. So I'm happy to like go for a deep dive conversation if you guys need. Sounds good. We'll, we'll let you know. I would love to join this session to get a better understanding. I think that that's just a perfect opportunity. And, um, uh, one question regarding, you said you send it out. What do you plan at the moment? One-to-one uh, -one, um, video call interviews or survey only? So some combination of both, mm -hmm. depending on what we decide is an adequate number of people to sort of test out our assumptions. Makes sense. Um, if it's a lot, then ideally surveys because interviews are hard to schedule. Maybe you can share your screen, Eli, because I think we need to ask permission for the board. So 
it might be easier if you oh sorry i can i can wait the mirror board you need permission for that's what you wanted to go through right oh i just i just thought it'd be useful to um just to share it in case you're curious uh, but uh, let me let me open it up a sec Okay, you should be able to access it now. It's grease running low. Can I plug mm -hmm. into this? There's, there's nothing specific that uh, I think is like needed to go over right now with all of you here. But if anyone has questions, feel free to let any of us know, and we'll be happy to walk you through it. Sorry, I'm a bit lost. So I am in the soft governance culture and culture um, board, but what we need to do is like the Austrian principles. We're gonna get in there. Uh, we're just hearing some updates from the onboarding working group. Maybe, um, Angela, do you have uh, some points that you would like to cover on that? Or maybe we should move forward? Anything? I mean, um, it's up to Eli to to give us an overview. Or I'm not sure what I can add here. Um, I mean, I, I'm happy to pass it to Jonas or Dulce if they have anything specific. But um, I think we'll go in more detail, like into the crypto economics, once like, we finalize the questions a little bit further down. But I mean, I can I can briefly share um, my screen and go on the robot and show the robot show show what our priorities has been. Sure, that sounds good. So in general, I think the biggest challenge we had with this process is to specify what the TE Commons uh, is going to be actually used for. Um, for instance, in the stakeholder document, um, Angela and others added multiple scenarios where it could go, how inclusive or exclusive the TE Commons might be, and so on. So our challenge, there has been a lot of work about the vision uh, of TE Commons, what the purpose should be. And so the challenge right now for the stakeholder um, research is to see how, like, what specific things should the TE Commons do. And so, first of all, we went over um, all the stakeholders we could imagine and what they might contribute in this big board. Um, I think there is no value right now to go over all the details, but this is basically how we started out. Um, then to get a little more concrete, we mapped out what might be different actors from a background perspective, like what their skills are, um, what their interests and output might be for the TE Commons, and what types of contributions they might make. Um, and we mapped out all of, all of this, so in the end, after the interviews, we can inform our stakeholder boards, our expectations with this. Um, because we started out with doing portraits and then we realized um, we don't want to speculate on what people actually want. We want to first go into these interviews and then inf inform with the material of the interviews this research. And so in general, what we have been doing till now is generally brainstorm and map out what could be the specifics of what the TE Commons is used for, um, going more into detail than the general vision that was already worked on extensively. Um, yeah, I think if you're interested, you can go over um, 
the board, as Eli said, it's kind of going through our brains. But I think that's a good update where we are right now with the process. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So, um, so now we can go to challenge of um, executive layer. Yep. Um, I just want to briefly highlight what we've been discussing in the last couple of days on um, executive layers. Um, I hope you can see my screen now. Can yes. you can yeah. give me any signal if yes. you can see my screen? Okay, yeah. brilliant. So I have tried to collect um, the question on an executive layer pop up when I was reviewing, okay, what should stakeholders do? What can we do with technical, um, the technical setup we have at the moment with voting and uh, distributing funds? Then there is still something that Jessica, I guess, phrased like, okay, there must be somebody to clean up after the party. And you could take it like that. So there are still tasks that might not be taken over by anybody at any time. And I've tried to make a summary of examples of such tasks uh, we should take a look at. So for example, an interface to outsiders for signing service contracts to non-members of the community. This could be, for example, if we um, if we are ever able to um, have a local event again and we, we want to organize it and then also have a location, then you always have some service contracts. Who should be able to sign such contracts or for is holding there a link to the, Is there a link to this document? Uh, yes, there, there's the link in the onboarding group, and I can also paste it's also it. Also in the agenda, in the mirror. In the okay. agenda, in Thank the you. mirror. Yeah. Is it? Okay, can you find it? Let me know. Um, okay, for holding keys, like accounts, credentials, rights for community infrastructure, like the Discord server, like social media accounts, like wallets. Then for holding assets, like the Twitter account as a like an asset with all the communities we collected, the uh, YouTube with, I guess, at the moment, 650 um, uh, registrations, uh, the web domains, platforms also like the Token Engineering Academy. Um, then for preparing votes, putting together all information required to take a decision. For example, Okay, now we are mostly uh, focusing on proposals, like what do we want to fund? But there might be also proposals how to, uh, how to take the next step in uh, the smart contracts for decision making. Now, in case we require specific expertise, we can't out of reach in our community so that we don't have a contributor say, signing up for, for, let's say, for a smart contract audit. Who is preparing the votes here, um, making a recommendation or providing all the information necessary to take a decision, right? Or if we need to onboard legal or other advice beyond our community. Then, for example, solving issues, whatever it might take, uh, I call it community maintenance. So those tiny little things like the website is down or price doesn't work or a logo is not available. Um, tiny task that nobody is fond of taking care for, perhaps too tiny to push it to community voting, mm -hmm. or take emergency decision when a quick reaction is required in case of a hack or a bug of our bonding curve. For conflict resolution and enforcing community rules, another aspect, as a custodian, if he needed holding funds in fiat and crypto, as representatives of community members, um, if community members are lacking bandwidth, or taking care that proposals are executable. So are there any policies um, to make sure that it's not only that the end of a voting process is not the voting itself, but uh, delivering on proposals. And I 
all these tasks, it's a list, perhaps it's not, it's not even complete. Uh, the thing is, I, f I found that many people at the moment are just assuming that there will be some management of the community. But this kind of some management is just not um, growing out of thin air. We have to make decisions here. And I just wanted to highlight that these are areas where I see a need. It might not be one layer, so not three people responsible for all those tasks. We might have different entities taking over such responsibilities. But I guess it's worth, yeah, it's worth discussing it. Yeah, this is great. Thank, thank you so much for making that list because this falls a lot into um, the boundaries of the system, the role, so many uh, questions that the role has, mm -hmm. so many uh, governments. And, and does anybody have any questions? Maybe one or two minutes of questions to this document before we go to the Austrian principles? It's not a question, it's just lots of gratitude. This is an amazing document. It lists gratitude. out a lot of opportunities for uh, a group of, uh, you know, doers to take action and, and that we might want to have as uh, initial like proposals that are ready to go right away so that we don't have to miss a beat. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people might think, oh, executive branch of the government and that's not necessarily what this looks like to me. It's not a monopoly on all execution like we have in normal governance governments, but it, instead it's a lot of small uh, autonomous departments that at least know their role and know that things need to be done. And I think that's, that makes sense. We just have to call out power dynamics uh, because that's what executive layers do is they create a power dynamic. You just got to call it out and, uh, and make sure that there's accountability and and understanding there's accountability and exactly and that's the whole purpose of of this process for me because i just want to make sure that roles that need to be covered and decisions that at some point have to be made are that we are ready to take decisions and that any individual who who is signing up is aware of responsibility and accountability and at the same time that this is transparent to the all other community members. I think this is a great use for the notion or the click up some type of click of tasks tool. that we could see all everything that is up and when new contributors join they know what they can do and they know tasks that can be picked up and who is responsible for what and a way to have it all organized for for all of us so maybe it's something we can discuss in the in our next call in the community steward call all right two questions um, where, can, where can I find this document? I didn't hear that. I, I just posted it. I put well. I put it in the mm -hmm. SG working this TechSoftGov working group uh, channel. In text, okay. Great. So I would like to jump into a review of Ostrom's principles. <laughs> Is anybody speaking? Yeah, I was speaking. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I changed channel. Uh, um, the second question is, uh, I know that Common Stack work with holac holacracy or holacracy or um, so if that is true, then can we have like a, maybe a way of um, replicating that approach here so that we play, we, we um, work with roles, define circles and so on, 
like um, in my personal opinion, I believe that um, there is not coming people that say, oh, no, this needs to be completely decentralized. People want stuff that work, not, pe not things that get um, to vote on everything. So I, I, my approach on this is to have these executive layers and to have people that take decisions that are in the place to take the decisions, like they know how to take decisions, but at the same time that anybody that is a trusted person can um, say, hey, hey, I, that, that vote or that decision, I think is not that way. So that can argument against any decision taken, but that will be like the specific cases. But for default, let the, the people that know and that work to take the decisions. Just that. Uh, common sec doesn't really use holacracy because we're only like four people. So I mean, we, we just kind of <laughs> take what comes with us. Uh, but but I think it makes sense for larger organizations. And Giveth used to use used to use holacracy and still does to some extent. So um, yeah, we can talk if you want. Okay, cool. So I'll share my screen and bring you guys to this board of Austrian principles. Oh, sorry. Can I ask one question? Sure. To Angela um, and friends from the TE Com Academy, are you planning on drafting from this research initial proposals as options for the per parameters around the uh, launch and the what stakeholders we would like or is it going to be like more like a drafted recommendation and you'll open it up to different proposals for the next step in the process so i think the plan yeah. is, to me sorry, sorry. i think and, and plan like this. I mean, first of all, um, so the result as stated in the manifesto are three scenarios. What I don't want to do is that we just take the scenarios, put it up for voting uh, without any further discussion. Because I can't I hear for some reason. Is that just me? Huh. I should be on. Yeah, I can hear. Can you, you may have muted. You may have. You can individually mute people. And Angela had some feedback before, mm -hmm. so you may have already muted her. Okay, test, 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 one, two, three. Can you hear me, Jess? Check. Okay, I hope it's fine. Yeah, so what I don't want to do is just taking these uh, scenarios, put it up for voting, and that's it. I'd rather uh, then, if we have the scenario settled, go into a, to a discussion, align it with comms, uh, tech, further also legal uh, and soft culture, so that we, um, yeah, so that we have a solid result supported by all working groups and not uh, randomly voting on scenarios. Jess, I hope you've been able to hear me too. I will watch the recording. Watch the it recording. is me. Okay. Libby. <laughs> Thank you for answering. I'll watch the recording and message you if I have any further questions. Apologize, Libby. Okay. No problem. Here we go. Okay. So, so this, uh, the objective of this working group was to sync as much data as possible with uh, the eight Austrian principles and make sure that we are somehow going in this direction. So, so I'll go uh, one by one. They are quick and I'll point the places where there are space for us to have discussions and where I think it's mostly um, missing information right now. So principle number one, comms need to have clearly defined boundaries. Um, I would like to hear more inputs here, but my understanding of the boundaries we have right now is the onboarding process for contributors, the stakeholders onboarding process that we're develop 
developing that um, they mean who is allowed to hold governance rights, and this is a huge boundary. The contribution reward process, so the way we have, uh, the way we reward contribution, it's all, also some type of a boundary. Our kind of conduct, vision, mission, and values to make sure we are aligned somehow. Um, and Griff just added uh, tokens. And then number two, rules to need to fit local circumstances. This is, I think, uh, where we have most open right now, because what are our local circumstances? We are a decentralized crypto community, so the local circumstances are very broad. And, and what are the rules that we are building and how they can be enforced after the launch? This is an issue that I had in, in a past community that I was a part of and, and I see in other communities too, is how can we enforce soft governance? Because once uh, voting is there, once other processes that are uh, on chain are there, it becomes very hard to track all the collaboration we're having, especially when we're scaling. So, so I would love to hear more inputs in, in, in number two. And then number three, participatory decision-making. We have the advice process. And one question is, would we like to keep it after the lunch? I think is important. And it falls back into number two. It's a soft governance um, rule, let's say, that I don't know how we would be able to enforce it, but I think it's very healthy for the ecosystem to have some type of process for the proposal making before the voting. And then conviction voting is uh, participatory decision making uh, tool we'll have once we're launched. Number four, commons must receive legal recognition in jurisdictions where they operate. Uh, the trusted seed, like Grief was explaining in the comms working group, is somehow a part of this legal structure. And, and we definitely need more. So this will come with the legal working group that we should start iterating on. So if you guys are interested on starting a legal working group, if you know uh, crypto lawyers that would want to come play with us, uh, let's start this conversation. Number th six, sanctions for violations should be graduated. Um, Juan is making amazing progress with the conflict resolution process and he will jump into it very soon to show a bit more of how grounded it is. Um, it, it came from a complexity of many ideas to very simple steps that are uh, very uh, realistically aligned with the, uh, with the, the commons that we are building. And then five, rules are enforced by effective and accountable monitoring. So how to enforce mutual accountability? I think this has a lot to do with what Angela was just speaking about and with having a place where we can see all the tasks from the community, who are the owners of those tasks. Uh, once, one source of truth document and that we can all track progress from there. And this creates mutual accountability. And yeah, I think that's what I meant by workflow charts. And then number eight, comms should be in nested ecosystems within larger commons. Uh, we are inside of the Ethereum uh, ecosystem and we're also developing DAO to DAO relationships, which will create ecosystems inside of ecosystems. And um, we can create a mutual support relationship from there. And also uh, the sub DAOs that will be funded from uh, the token engineering commons. And then uh, conflict resolution should be easily accessible and low cost. So uh, part of one um, conflict resolution practice is to have uh, experts training um, on conflict resolution towards community members. So, so we can have local mediators and I've been studying about how that is way more effective than having external conflict mediators. 
to at least be the first point of contact so people feel like they are talking to someone they understand and that understand the conflicts where they're coming from. And then if this um, doesn't provide any solutions, then we can bring to dispute with external parties like like Claros or Aragon Court or other types of uh, external um, dispute parties that we can think of. So I'll open for questions, comments now. And yeah, please feel free to jump in this board and put more inputs. Just a thing, can you hear me? Regarding the legal uh, issue, do you know of uh, legal hackers? It's a network of uh, people interested in the law and technology. International one. I will put it in the in the group. Okay. Awesome. I don't have any comments for now. <laughs> Okay, so one open question I have is how do we think we can enforce soft governance practice once we launch the commons? And if this is something we are willing to create rules for? Yeah, Juan? Um, Lina, I, I, yeah. I think that uh, yes, we can because, um, well, to, uh, this week weekend we were in a in a uh, blockchain and crypto law lab. And that was a big question. Like, what is the difference between social law and um, traditional law? And like, after much discussions, uh, at least the, 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 the concept that I, that I think I built is that there is no difference between social law and traditional law. I mean, um, like as as in as in a sport game, there are laws that are only applied to that sport. And if you're not playing that sport, that rule don't apply to you. So it's like when people uh, acts uh, 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 it gets into our community, they have to accept the rules that uh, are 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 marked and that everyone has consensus on them. Like um like uh yeah you cannot disrespect another an, another member or something uh like there are these basic rules that that um that can uh that w with consensus can be legitimate i agree 100 percent. and the challenge is okay we have these rules but then uh anybody can submit a proposal let's say and and the and the hard governance is is open in a sense so if i go there and i submit a proposal and i don't know of the soft governance rules of this community and and maybe uh other people will vote in this proposal like what would make community members not vote in a proposal of someone that is not aligned with the soft governance rules I think the biggest thing here is that these governance rules are understood by a vast majority of the crew and ideally written down so it's easily referenced and accessible. I think that's the big difference between social law and regular law. It's that regular law, it's all written down and there's specific people that are appointed to judge whether it's right, whether it's true or not. And there's a whole system in place. Whereas social law, it's sort of, I don't want to say mob rule, but sort of, right? Like where there's a general understanding and people can see this vote, this proposal for something that they know is not part of the mission of the, of the token engineering commons and they can confidently, you know, a vote against it or even write in the forum, this is against the proposed like, like rules. And if you really want to do this, then here's the system of how to change the rules. Because that's one of the Eleanor Ostrom's main thing is that, and one of the principles is that the participants of the systems have to be able to change the rules. So sometimes something that is against the rules might be 
important to do for our mission. Yeah, Santi. Yeah, in other in other DAOs I've been participating, they force you to sign their constitution when you apply to be part of the DAO. And unless you accept it, you are not a member. You cannot become a member. I know it's kind of tough to, you know, think of all the rules that we may have, but at least start with a, an initial document. It can be a living document. We can update the, the, the document whenever we want, and you will have to re-sign it again. But at least there's something we all can refer to whenever there's any kind of conflict. And that is a way to avoid subjectivity in the in the exposure of the of the facts, because people shouldn't be applying to uh, subjective ethics, but to the ethics that the that the organization uh, is promoting. I would really like so, so. Um, if if um, to to like present a little bit of the idea because I want to hear a review of like the, this uh, draft that, that I've been trying to, to put together and ground with some ideas and make it simple. So um, just, to, just, just can we give Fabian a chance? He was about to say something and then I think we can probably change the topic. That's okay. Yeah, th th thanks, and uh, I will go on it is. Uh, you know, I, I, I like what you said. Um, I just want to point out that this, this may be a very uh, delicate and nuanced topic, right? We can say, oh, you know, we've written the ethics down and it's fine. And, you know, in a small group where we are now, you know, that, that works fairly well. Yeah, I hear my echo, so somebody's hearing me. <laughs> um, so, so, so basically, you want to... Uh, have have a, a fairly uh, you know explored understanding of what principles you want to be guided by. You know it doesn't mean that you need to be like regular law that everything needs to be nailed down in detail, but you want to have some kind of referent of what principles that you're guided by. Also, when you when you grow, you know basically you know what if this group is at some point only making up a small majority uh, minority of like a much larger pool, and you want to be able to change the rules because you want to be able to adopt for future unforeseen circumstances, but you want to be sure that this is done in a safe way and that it's not arbitrary you know suddenly uh, you know a large portion a large group comes in and starts to derail the thing so these are very very subtle and delicate topics and I, I just wanted to kind of put a little bit of emphasis because I agree with what you say in nature but when you deal with the real world it may quickly get like like quite a bit more challenging than it may uh, initially uh, look like but I'm very curious what you're going to share well uh, yeah, I totally, to totally agree with you. And I think that that's why there, there must be a clear definition of the values and uh, the ethics of the, of the organization uh, in order uh, so that that would be like the common language for, for addressing uh, the, the, the issues. Okay, I'm going to present like a little bit of the, the idea. I'll finish the system. So and Olivia, uh, did you want to time box Olivia, one? Uh, do you want to time box one? Yeah, um, I'm so upset I couldn't yeah, hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm so upset I couldn't hear. One, you, you, you have one, five minutes. You, you, you have five minutes, right? Yes. Well, I won't share my screen because uh, I would have to reboot the application. So uh, if anyone wants to join the document, the, the link to the document is in the mirror board, is in the Discord. And basically, um, well, the, the name of the proposal that I've been thinking about and uh, I've heard that the uh, people like it is gravity as the energy that keeps matter together when things start like pushing away from each other. And uh, yeah, like, I think that in human logic, the, the veracity of something is related to an earlier presumption of truth. So the dynamic that is suggested has to be legitimated as a common agreement. Uh, where, like, as I, I mentioned earlier, in, like in sports, when you play a sport, you, you accept the rules of that sport you are playing. So um, 
trying to address uh, and following some of uh, Ostrom's principles, I, I, um, I propose that there should be uh, uh, transparent human monitoring that should be like this group that should have like, th that should, should address power dynamics, but there should be rotation in this group because that in other way, the, there could be centralization of power. Uh, there should be like graduate extensions and easy access for conflict management. So for the graduate extensions, I, I propose something also like in sports, like uh, yellow cards and red cards and uh, verbal uh, warnings. Like um, there are these um, common issues that can be easily addressed uh, uh, for the, those, there shouldn't be like a long process or like a complex or, or a complex uh, like uh, process to address with them. There, there should be like these simple ways to uh, to to address common issues. Like like uh, as I mentioned, if, if you are playing a sport and you have a, a yellow card, you recognize that you have a yellow card and you know what you're doing and and the and what you are can and what ca can happen to you if you continue behaving badly. So uh, yeah, it, it's like a, a, a way to scale um, the, the sanctions that could start like light sanctions, medium sanctions, and they're like these red cards where uh, privileges can be removed, like uh, removing some CS tag tokens or banning for community calls or uh, re even requesting for an external arbitrage if a decision cannot be taken between, between uh, these members. And yeah, I also think that if a, a, a person is, is being like sanctioned and if he doesn't agree with the sanction, there can be like counter arguments to start a negotiating process with a subject matter expert in uh, conflict management. So that's basically the, the idea. And uh, the, there could be like this is scaling stages uh, in the conflict management process where there could start like negotiation, mediation, conciliation. And then finally, if there's no consensus inside the organization, that could, uh, that's when you call an external arbitrator. So uh, that's the idea. So uh, that's the idea. I have a question. Um, regarding rotation and avoid centralization of um, power in whatever area, conflict resolution or others, enforcing rules, whatever. My experience in communities is not only that you have um, people who, who are, who want to stick to their role and their power, it can also be the other way around that you don't have anybody who wants to take over responsibility. So what can we do here? Just imagine we have, um, we start with a conflict resolution um, group and have, I don't know, three people. And in the course of six months, those three people, well, don't have the bandwidth anymore and just quit. And we end up with having anybody. Is this also somewhere covered or are there ideas how to deal with that? Well, um, I think those, uh, uh, I think words are where I need uh, this group's guidance because uh, like having this idea, but I would really like to, to have it really grounded and polished with everyone's expert, expertise. Uh, I think that some of these uh, like uh, parameters are arbitrary. Like maybe we can have a rotation like every three years and like people, the, the, the person that, uh, that passed these three years uh, cannot join uh, the group for a period of time. And then he can join again. Uh, I mean, th these these are things that uh, should be like uh, agreed between between us be because that's what gives legitimacy to them. I think, in this sense, I like the approach of training members of the community to to become conflict resolutors because um, 
and, and maybe there could be a reward for that and an incentive for people to participate in these courses because then um, it touches into the intrinsic motivation of like maybe there is a conflict that people feel somehow um, closer to that they would like to solve and then this would naturally gravitate between multiple people and not be just one centralized group. Yeah, and and we also have a certain that's an interesting certain examples, element. And, and yeah. we also we also have certain examples where this uh, where we can draw from from the real world. Uh, for example, historically, the the First Nations they had the the mechanism of well, essentially they they were vibe watchers. So they basically had a, had a group of people that were just. They had a rule where one of the basic rules were that you had to come from a place of peace, right? You couldn't be per per participating in proceeding, but if you get upset and angry, they say like, you know, that's not a sound basis to make any kind of judgment or any kind of proposal. So first you have to come back a bit more to center. And they would have vibe watchers, the people that were basically, like you said, you know, they would basically flag people and then they would be suspended from interacting. They could still participate, but they had to, you know, even if they lost a lost one, for example, and there was a perfectly reasonable reason why they would go through grief, for example, that's fine. They just need, are, are required to basically take care of, the, of their own um, centered state so, so that they can be back from a pure state act again. So that's probably on the milder version where we basically just temporarily inhibit and suspend people. Then if we go across the spectrum towards more conflict resolution where things can be more agitated, you, you probably need more more specialized mechanisms where you, where you appoint people or have some kind of almost like a framework to to uh, to evaluate and in a in a wider sense judge what is a what is an adequate response and if you push it further then this is something that we've been discussing over the past few days in the in the context of a future law it's like what happens if you really have criminal conduct and you actually need to basically decide with with, with some kind of response to to basically either prevent inhibit or or take some kind of action so there's definitely a, spe a spectrum here and and we have examples on yeah, that you know, I'm not saying we need to adopt what exists so far, far, but it's it's always helpful to kind of see which models work, why they work, where where they're exposed, where they break down, and then learn from it. And yeah, that's well, very May interesting I, topic. May then, I? Uh, I? Sorry. Yeah, um, I just want to share an experience that happened in our community. Uh, we are a community of ten thousand Latinx in a Slack, and we have moderate moderators. And that one thing that helps a lot is when people start fighting in the community, I just stop, uh, just stop the slack, talk with the people. And sometimes you need like kind of pacifist. And I like what F8 say about the values. Like for example, what, we have to change the code of, co code of conduct in the way that if you are saying or doing something that make somebody else feel unsafe, that is a fact that you are doing something wrong. And in my experience, sometimes what it helped is not like punish people, but sometimes people just need to talk, like and need a medium, like a media I don't, I don't know how to say that in English, like a, a, a third medium person who, who can talk with both persons. Uh, that's a, it's something that helps a lot, like just to stop people, like when I are, they are fighting in a Slack, just like, hey, chill. And and a, th and a third person talk with them, but I, I think it comes from what are the values of the communities. For example, for us as a Latinx in the States, it makes sense to create a safe space for Latinx. Uh, that was my, my experience with communities. Thanks for sharing those things. I'll have to uh, cut you here, Juan, I'm so sorry. Let's continue the conversation in the chat. We have... Uh, five minutes to wrap up. And I just want to quickly go through the accountability that we talked so much about last week. And and I've been researching about it. And there's one point in Austin's uh, Governing the Commons book where first he mentions that um, in order to create rules and to cooperate and to have accountability for the work, uh, players need to signal intention to cooperate 
in the hope that they will reciprocate for a series of mutually productive plays. That establishing trust, establishing a sense of community are, in their view, mechanisms for solving the problems of supplying new institutions. New institutions, they, uh, they mean supplying new rules or supplying new structures for the collaboration to happen. So um, thinking about that and the answers that we had in this board of the accountability, what is the main block for accountability? The main things that came up were uh, personal things of not feeling like your work is valuable or not feeling included or not feeling important. So many things, feeling emotions related and um, this brought me to think that that's maybe why accountability is such a big issue in our communities, because maybe we haven't been doing such a great job on providing trust uh, rituals and building trust among uh, people as people and not just as users or, I don't know, more impersonal terms that we, we tend to use a lot. So I would propose uh, if anybody has time, any time this week, and we can coordinate in the chat to come up with trust rituals of like what types of, um, yeah, what types of practices we can have in this calls or in the ways we collaborate in the chat to create trust between each other. And and I close and I close this here, and maybe we can have a. 20 second closing round to hear from everyone. Well, I can start. Uh, thank you guys so much. This is a great call. Uh, Dulce, I really appreciate the user story there. Uh, I try to write it down in this document. If anyone else has anyone user else stories has of conflicts that arise, uh, that's really valuable for us to design the a system that will accomplish them. So feel free to go into the conflict resolution for the TEC doc, and there's a subject header called user stories. Put something in there, and, and let's make sure that we have a system that will address those conflicts. I'll pass it to Angela. Okay, yeah, a lot of um, material to digest. Happy to take a look at the conflict resolution as well, and all and trying to catch up with everything that work uh, that happened in the other groups. I pass on to Manu. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, been learning a lot from you guys, so I'm super glad to be here and. Um, Really looking forward to continue contributing on on the softball and also in the comms and whatever I'm needed um, here to help. And I pass it to um, Santi. Hey everyone, thank you. Bye. Well, I want to thank everyone. Uh, uh, it's it's awesome to see all the information that's being created here on the group and trying to catch up with everything. Just uh, uh, resonating from Livia's last words, I think one of the one of the things that we could do to try to create more uh, more uh, trust between the, the groups is to maybe every once in a while, I know that everyone's got a tight schedule, but we are like running all the time and, and doing all these uh, meetings, work meetings, Maybe just have one meeting, no work meeting, just to talk, just to whatever, whatever we want to do. It would it would link us a little bit, a little bit more. And I'll pass it to Juan. Thanks very much. I feel um, like I'm honored about uh, all these amazing people like listening to some of my ideas and reviewing. So I'm very happy about all this work and I'll pass it to Dulce. You're muted, Dulce. I know. Yeah, I'm super excited about know everybody here. And I'm just super happy. 
about learning from you and super happy to see grief here i didn't know you were in this project and now i, I know you are one of the leaders that's super nice <laughs> And I pass to Jonas. Yeah, I think it's great to have these calls where everybody quickly shares what they're working on because this informs, I think, each other and what's going on and to get feedback from other people, what they might think be important. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. I will pass to Eli. Hey, yeah, it was it was nice to get out of our little insular bubble and hear what everyone else was up to. Um, and I'm excited to hear or to show you what we get up to in the next week or so. I think you guys will be pretty interested. It'll be some fun stuff. Um, and I'll pass to uh, Zeptimus. Uh, uh, thanks for... I, oh, I'm a bit nervous. Uh, <laughs> I think like the, the thing we were talking were awesome. Like I really like what uh, I think it's Juan say about like when you are uh, like when you misbehave and you have like the red card and uh, yellow card, red card. So that, that helps people to understand uh, what, what I mean to understand they're behaving wrong. And it's a very nice thing like to change th this behavior. I really like that idea and thank you for the learning <laughs> and I'll pass to Anderson. Hey, thanks Optimus. Uh, good job. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, good positive reinforcement to everyone. I think this is the right track, this kind of workflow that's been established in the working groups and the channels. Uh, everything seems very focused. And yeah, like you said, we can all come together and get out of our bubbles uh, together. So yeah, I just want to give everyone a pat on the back. It's easy to be hard on ourselves and because there's such a big impact to what we're doing. But um, I don't think we can go wrong this sort of weekly progress, like every meeting I made and then the data collection too, like there's always documents being produced. There's always, uh, everything's being crystallized into sort of actionable takeaways. So I just want to say good job, everyone. And I'll pass it to um, who? Uh, Angela, did you go? I already did, but thanks for the <laughs> kind words, <laughs> Sean. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. How about um, let's see, H H Beso. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Umberto. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited about everything that is going on here. It's uh, the advance has been amazing. And um, it's a great team. So let's keep the, the good part. I was also doing the uh, LinkedIn. I also, I just shared it to Jessica so she can look at it. And later we can uh, give the authority of the or the representation of LinkedIn to anybody that wants it. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Have a good night, everybody. I'll pass to Jess. Thanks, Livy. Um yeah, I just wanted to say there were two things. Um, what Livia said about uh, the human side, I we have been having many discussions and I'm very interested in finding ways so uh, for the rituals. And one of which I'll mention as a sneak preview, but we're not quite there. We're planning a happy Praisegiving celebration for aligning with American Thanksgiving week. So we'll be sending something soon so we can have like a year in review, state of the non-state and people can sing. I want to hear some like Latin songs. I'm hoping people will not be shy and bust out their guitar and just like sit around and share what people have been doing this year and praising people and also letting people share poems or have some time for this open sharing because Santi also what you were saying I think this is important and it is a challenge and what we have to figure out in virtual communities how to feel like we'll, we are together Jeff's brother got married virtually last weekend and it inspired me that we can do these things and feel like we're there so um, with those two things being said i'm happy to hear everything happening and we're so lucky to have the newcomers and the te academy and dolce the fact that you're running a slack with ten thousand people we can learn so much from you so thanks everybody and so grateful for all of your sharing
There's a, I, I think Fabian still needs to go. We have Fa Fabian. All right, sure. Yeah, so I, uh, again, a lot of amazing content in here. I'm very much down for the legal group that was brought up and uh, Juan also like pursuing that direction. You know, if, if there's any way, any way to contribute, to participate, uh, I feel that's very, very valuable and very down for that. I like the idea of, uh, of hanging out to gain familiar, familiarity and kind of develop that kind of social, it was brought up in the context of trust and that's really wonderful. I do believe that there are additional uh, layers required to kind of make trust scalable from a structural point of view. And because we have to understand, or at least I believe that for trust to emerge, there needs to be a certain degree of vulnerability. And I mean this, you know, in, in the widest sense as a kind of exposure. So technically we can almost think of the opposite of an LLC, right? If you have shielded liability, then you're structured in a way which kind of, you create a kind of a separation from exposure. And and while it's very important to make things safe, we are in the crypto space in generally a little bit top heavy on, you know, sometimes almost bordering kind of pa towards a paranoid approach of like making everything super safe. And then that creates this extreme isolation which is necessary for some very critical cases, but it needs to be balanced. And 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 so th th there are kind of probably new designs that need to emerge and be developed to create a social kind of exposure so that we have a network of trust that can be experienced. Anyway, I was very glad to be here. And uh, yeah, I hope I think I was the last. Otherwise, next, please go. Jonah still didn't go. Um, I, I think I already went. Craig hasn't. Oops. But... Craig hasn't. Julio. Hi, Craig here. Uh, kudos to all. Um, where to start? I'm just sponging everything up, learning so much, but also very interested in seeing the survey work out of the. That's going to be a gold mine. Again, to everybody and anybody left, Julio, Quarto Julio. Yeah, I don't have so much to add. I'm very happy here. It's a very interesting and uh, community with a lot of potential because there are a lot of interesting communities and a lot of beautiful uh, and uh, pleasable, pleasant communities. But this is uh, about the interesting with potential, so I'm very excited about the future and also happy about this present. Uh, I was just thinking that uh, everybody I want to make an intervention, uh, I say like, no, it's, uh, it's too, it's, uh, it's a too much big thing. Uh, we need to, something more concrete because I'm very like uh, hyper excited about, about things and get uh, too much in the long run. And so it uh, came to mind to me that uh, could be nice in the soft gov group, that is the group about the governance of the world community, to know our personal defects and to communicate it uh, to the others. For example, uh, when I'm hungry, I tend to get uh, nervous very early. So, <laughs> for example, you know, if you if you if I respond badly to you don't uh, they, um, care too much about it, okay, something like that. Uh, beyond, uh, as we are doing, uh, to praise ourselves and uh, be grateful for our contributions, also to know our uh, personal recurrent defects, I think it would be nice. Because I don't know, maybe someone is too logoroic or uh, someone uh, is uh, the opposite of being too theoretic, like uh, super concrete and uh, I don't know, just a tough and um, nothing. I there's anybody. I'm super tired. Sorry for my English that is not working. Really. <laughs> Your English is great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone for coming. And we're going to hang out here, Griff, I, Angela, Jess, and Craig for our community steward call. And 
and it was great to see all of you and we keep in touch and there's more next week. Ciao, muchas gracias. Thank you everyone. Gracias. Ciao. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.